I made a video in the past entitled 10 Facts About the Mark of the Beast Satan Doesn't Want You to Know in which I identified what the mark of the beast is according to the Bible and how to avoid it. But did you know that God has a mark too? It's called the seal of God and it's equally as important to understand what this is along with the mark of the beast. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you what the seal of God is by giving you 10 facts about the seal of God you need to know to survive the tribulation. But before I do that, I want to thank Little Light Studios for sponsoring this video. Little Light Studios is a Christian ministry with a YouTube channel which exposes hidden dangers in popular movies, Disney, comic books, video games, and things of that nature. I personally enjoy their videos and highly recommend that you subscribe to their channel. You can do so by clicking on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen or the link in the video description. Now let's get into the facts. Fact number one, God's seal is not a physical mark. Revelation chapter 7 verses 2 through 3 states, And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of God in their foreheads. Notice that it's an angel doing the sealing here, and other angels recognize this seal. So this is not a physical mark. In other words, it's not something that followers of the Lord are visibly going to display like a tattoo on their foreheads or something. Fact number two, the forehead represents the mind. The reason why the Bible says that followers of the Lord are sealed in their foreheads is because the forehead represents the mind. The frontal lobe of your brain is located right behind your forehead and that's where your decision-making processes take place. So those who receive the seal of God in their foreheads are those who make a conscious decision to obey God's requirements to receive his seal. Fact number three, God's seal will protect us from the seven last plagues. In speaking about the seven last plagues, Revelation chapter 16 verses one through two says, and I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first angel went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. Notice that the plagues affect those who receive the mark of the beast and worship his image. That means that those who get the seal of God escape the plagues. Therefore, you want to know what the seal of God is and receive it. Fact number four, we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. Some people think that the seal of God spoken about in the book of Revelation is the Holy Spirit. Because Ephesians chapter 1 verses 13 through 14 says, You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Now, I think there is some truth to that and I'm not going to argue with that, but I think there's more. Because the Holy Spirit, as a seal mentioned in Ephesians, applies to all Christians throughout history. But there's a special work to be done by the Holy Spirit in the lives of believers in the end times which will distinguish them from those who receive the mark of the beast. This is the seal of God Revelation talks about. It's a characteristic that is going to be displayed in the lives of those who have truly been renewed by the Holy Spirit and have surrendered their lives to Christ in the end times. And I'm going to get more into the details right now.
Fact number five, God's seal is in his law. The Lord said in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16, Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. That means that God's seal has something to do with his law of Ten Commandments. As a matter of fact, it's found within his law. Fact number six, God's sign is his seal. The words sign and seal are used interchangeably in the Bible. For example, speaking about Abraham, Romans chapter 4 verse 11 says, And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had while still uncircumcised. It calls circumcision here both a sign and a seal. So if we can find out what God's sign is, then we can identify what the seal of God is because they are both the same thing. And that's what we're going to do right now. Fact number seven, the Sabbath is God's sign. The Lord said in Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 20, And hallow my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. The Sabbath is God's sign, which means the Sabbath is God's seal. Now, the Sabbath I'm talking about here is the Bible Sabbath, which is on the seventh day of the week, according to the fourth commandment in the Decalogue. And the seventh day of the week corresponds to what we call Saturday. The problem is most people have been misled into believing that Sunday, the first day of the week, is the Sabbath, even though there is no evidence in the Bible to support that. And many people think it doesn't matter what day you celebrate the Sabbath on, but it does matter. It's a sign of God's authority, and He chose the day. He didn't leave it up to us to choose it. Fact number eight, there are three elements to a seal. This is further confirmation that the seventh day Sabbath is God's seal. A legal seal typically contains three elements. One, the name of the seal giver. Two, his title. And three, his territory. For example, when Jesus' tomb was sealed by Pontius Pilate to make it secure, according to Matthew chapter 27, verses 62 through 66, that seal would have read, Pontius Pilate, that's his name, King, that's his title, of Judea, that's his territory. These three elements are found in the fourth commandment, the one that tells us to keep the Sabbath holy. You can read it in Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. It says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Now here is where we find his seal. For in six days the Lord, that's his name, made, that's his title, creator, heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and that's his territory, everything in existence and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Therefore the seventh day Sabbath is the seal of God. Fact number nine, 777 is found in the Sabbath. In the book of Revelation, the beast power which deceives the world into accepting the mark of the beast is identified by a number. Revelation chapter 13 verse 18 tells us, Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Did you know that the number 777 is associated with the Sabbath? When the Sabbath was instituted on the seventh day of creation week, Genesis chapter 2 verses 1 through 3 says, Then the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. 
And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. In case you missed it, that passage says seventh day three times. That's three sevens. And that's significant because it sets the Sabbath in opposition to the beast and his mark. Fact number 10. 144,000 Israelites will be sealed. Revelation chapter 7 verses 1 through 4 says, And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Does that mean that you have to be Jewish to receive God's seal and be delivered from the seven last plagues? No. If you continue reading on, it says that 12,000 Israelites from each of the 12 tribes of Israel are sealed. However, there's a problem with that. When John wrote the book of Revelation, only two of the original 12 tribes remained in existence, and that was Benjamin and Judah. The other ten tribes were lost track of after they were taken into Assyrian captivity in 722 BC. They basically just assimilated with the Assyrians and lost their identity. So from that, it's safe to conclude that the book of Revelation is not being literal. It's being symbolic when talking about the Israelites who will be sealed. Not to mention the Bible indicates that believers in Christ are spiritual Israel. Galatians chapter 3 verse 29 tells us, And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Abraham was the father of the nation of Israel. Those who believe in Christ are the descendants or seed of Abraham in a spiritual sense. That means that all Christians are spiritual Israelites and the 144,000 are going to be Christians, not literal Jews. Now about the number 144,000. There is some debate, even in my church, about whether or not this number is literal. Some respectable theologians, which I look up to, claim that it is symbolic, while others say it's literal. And personally, I don't know for sure, because the 144,000 haven't been sealed yet. But in case that discourages you or makes you think that only 144,000 people are going to be saved, after mentioning the 144,000, Revelation chapter 7 verse 9 says, After this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man can number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. It's not only the 144,000 that are going to be saved. The great multitude here represents all those who get saved and make it into the kingdom besides the 144,000. The 144,000 are simply Christians who live through the final tribulation and receive the seal of God and stand in opposition to those who receive the mark of the beast. The devil has his mark. It's called the mark of the beast. It will be enforced on a global scale before the second coming of Jesus Christ. At the same time, God has his mark. It's called the seal of God. It's not a physical mark, and those who receive it, especially when the mark of the beast is enforced, will keep the Sabbath holy. They do this because they are totally surrendered to God 
and will obey him at all costs, even if it means jeopardizing their life. By the way, check out my Sabbath Keeper t-shirt by clicking on the card on the screen or the link in the video description. It could be a good conversation starter to help you share your faith and proceeds from your purchase help keep my channel going. Not to mention, you'll get free shipping in the United States if you order now. If you'd like to learn more about the Sabbath, click on the screen to watch my video entitled 20 Facts About the Sabbath Every Christian Must Know. Subscribe to my channel if you're new, and if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like it and share it. Thank you for watching, and God bless you.